Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. This is another weekly wrap up. So this is also a weekly wrap up after a month has finished. So at the end of the video, there will be my October stats. So if you're a stats person like me, you get to see how I'm doing on my goals. All right, so jumping into the book wrap-up portion, I finished three things this week. I finished first The Masked City by Genevieve Kogman, and this is book two in her Invisible Library series. So we're continuing to follow Irene and Kai from the first book, and in this one, Kai gets kidnapped, and Irene has to go find him in an alternate dimension Venice. So I had a lot of fun with this book. Something that is very interesting with the series is Cogman gets to work in historical elements, but because it's alternate realities, she then gets to change things. She doesn't have to be strictly historical. And seeing that overlap of historical versus fantastical is so much fun. I think if I ever was going to write anything like historical, it would be more like this. It would be an alt another dimension. So then I would have more leeway in how everything goes. I remember thinking it very odd because at the very beginning, like very first chapter, Kai gets kidnapped. So that's not a spoiler. You, you find that out at the very beginning. But I thought it was very odd that that was the structure of separating the two main characters. And then we're primarily focusing Irene. But Cogman did do some Kai interludes. So you get to see a little bit of what he is seeing as it goes on. That way you still feel connected to Kai as well, because otherwise you're just following Irene looking for Kai. And it's another twist on the damsel of distress trope where Kai is male. In some ways you can say he is arguably stronger than Irene, but yet he was the one who was kidnapped and not Irene. So then Irene has to use not only her gifts that she has because she's a librarian, but also just her own intelligence and street smarts to find Kai. And I like the layering of everything that is going into this book. The decisions that Irene makes, the decisions that other characters make, all affect the outcome at the end. And to me, that's just great story writing right there. I'm looking forward to continuing reading this series, and I'm very sad that I'm finding it at the point I am and not when it was coming out, and so then I could have been excited for each book to come out as well. I think this is a series that is underrated, or at least underhyped, because I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. And it is so much fun, especially if you like historical and you like fantasy. This book should be, or this book and this book series should really be up your alley. I then finished The Winter Bride by Annie Gracie. And this is the second in her Chance Sisters series. The first one was The Autumn Bride, where we found, where we followed Abigail and her sisters. And now we're following Damaris, who is one of the adopted sisters. Again, this book, while being a romance, really tackles other social issues. It tackles sexual liberation and also work liberation. What is a female allowed to do and does her station in society dictate the choices that she has and the choices that she has to put up with? And I really enjoyed it. Like Damaris knows her own mind and some might, some might say that everything was leading to a miscommunication between the characters except it wasn't that they did not understand each other. It was just there were things that they weren't ready to share and that felt very natural. So then it wasn't so much a miscommunication. It was just these characters had to learn to trust one another before they would share the, the secrets that were wounding them. I also really loved it when Damaris met uh, Freddie's parents and just that she gives them no guff. They start getting attitude and she's like, oh, oh no, we're not going there. So I really enjoyed it. And it's another series that I am having a lot of fun with. And I then finally read Far Sector by N.K. Jemison. 
And this is the graphic novel that just won the Hugo Award for graphic novels. And it's a Green Lantern story. I don't know much about Green Lantern. And the concept of how everything plays out is very interesting. So it's called Far Sector because this Green Lantern... Because this Green Lantern Joe is sent to a solar system on the very edge of the universe. We get to meet the inhabitants of the planet that she's working with and get to know them as she's getting to know them. So a lot of our view is because of how she sees them. And then you get a lot of correlation between what's happening in their world with their politics and what happens in our world and our politics. I think this is a story where the author could put a lot of herself and her experiences on the page. I don't know if that's necessarily what she did, but she did very, when you're looking at the Earth flashbacks, those are very common Earth experiences. They shouldn't be common, but they are common. And then with the parallel of how another society is basically perpetuating some of these things, she's trying to just say, this is not a good way to do things. You guys have an opportunity to change. I mean, that's, that's the best way I can describe my feelings around this book. I'm sorry, I don't have anything more eloquent to say, but I completely understand why this one, the Hugo, if I had read it, I would have voted for it. In my haste, I forgot to say what I picked up this week to read, and that was Red Shirts by John Scalzi, which is was a buddy read for one of the groups that I was wanting, or that I am part of, but I just wasn't able to get to it because of some interlibrary loan issues. And it, it's interesting so far. We are following Dahl, is his last name? Oh, I forget his first name, but he is a an underling or a red shirt on this Star Trek-esque ship and he's found out pretty quickly that you don't want to go on away missions because people die a lot and now he's investigating why that is and what's going on it has definitely the normal John Scalzi sense of humor I have also continued working on Bring Me a Unicorn by Anne Mara Lindbergh, uh, going into her college years. Writing wrap up. Drum roll, please. Yes, I have written this week. I have been doing pretty well. I wrote the first, second, and third, and then I took the fourth off because there was work drama going on and I was just tired. And I go, you know what? I don't have to kill myself. I get to take care of myself this month as well as write. I I don't know if what I'm writing is good or not. The Oh, but I guess I should tell you what I am doing. So the project that I'm working on, I call it Project Music Story because all five of the main characters are based off of a piece of music. And the character that I'm following right now, his name is Theo and his song is Viva La Vida. I've been playing that over and over and over a lot to help me get into his mindset. And this book is set, I guess I haven't nailed down the timeline exactly, but it is set after you've had a noble rebellion and a people's revolution, both. So they were both rebelling for different things but Theo is the deposed king, but he's in hiding, and he doesn't technically know he's in hiding yet, because he's suffering from a head injury, or recovering from a head energy. Can't speak. He is recovering from a head injury, so obviously I will have to do more research on head injuries and how that works, but right now some of his chapters are in the past, and then some of his ch chapters are in the present. And that has been a very interesting experience to write. For the past chapters, I am experimenting with second person. It's not a tense that I've written in before. So again, I don't think 
what I'm producing necessarily is good writing, but it's getting it out there. And that's really what a zero draft is for me, is just getting the words on the page and getting the ideas on the page. Because what I really love is revising when you get to clean up the language and make things make more sense. So I know like right now a lot of it is I just have characters, you know, telling you things. And then when I revise it, I take out the dialogue and I change it so you can more see what is happening versus just have an info dump. So there, if you didn't know, I do a lot of info dumpy writing for my zero drafts because I'm getting the information down. And then later I'd go, hmm, does this information, is it being conveyed in the right way? And I'm having so much fun. These are going to be very difficult characters to write. Like I said, right now I'm, I, there's five main characters, but I'm focusing on Theo's perspective this month. And then if I f finish with him, I will start a different perspective. The point is I am writing and I am having fun with it. And then for other media, this section is probably going to be pretty small for the month of November because the more I write, the less I watch TV. The more I read, the less I watch TV. So I've been writing and then I read a little bit before I go to bed. And I'm reading sci-fi because I'm writing fantasy. My husband's watching Andor. He says it's great. I probably will binge watch that for Thanksgiving. So we're going to go ahead and do stats for the month of October. How did I do? <laughs> My monthly goal is to read eight books a month. I read nine. To break that down, I read six novels one nonfiction, and two graphic novels. For my goal to read one new release a month, I read two. I read the nonfiction, Slaying the Dragon, and the fiction, Station Eternity, which was my most anticipated book of the year. For my Goodreads currently reading, I started the month at 102, and then I put three books on the list because they had to go back to the library. So I am now sitting at 105. I also rearranged my shelves. I don't know if you could see. So I went through and counted all of my unread books that I'm planning to read. I have some unread books on my shelf that are my husband's and I actually gave him his own shelf at the top of the bookshelf so that he can find his books a lot easier. Start of the month, of October at 113 and ended at 129 because I did the recount and added whatever new books I had purchased. My series goal of finishing things that I'm currently reading, I started the month at 93 and out of the 93, 22 of those series are caught up, meaning I've read them to the point where there's no more books actually out. I did not finish any series this month. I started three, so that leaves me at 96 series and 23 caught up. Because one of those three is the first in the series and it's my new release actually for this month. Glancing at my original goal sheet, my physical TBR and my finished series numbers are going up, not down. I'm not necessarily sad about that. But it is kind of funny. It is definitely, you can definitely tell I am a book person because of how those numbers are going. And that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys are having a great week as well. And if you are doing NaNoWriMo that you are, the words are just coming to you and you're not having to bang your head against the wall to be able to write. I'm having trouble speaking, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.